Whoever has that kid wins the war. What do you want, sweetie? For robots to be free. Hey, Gareth, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, Gareth. I just got to tell you, this movie is probably one of my favorite movies of 2023. Absolutely amazing. Um, really, really fantastic film. Let's kind of dive into this a little bit because, I mean, in the era of big IP films, how hard is it to make a film that is original in this day and age? The hardest thing is not making the movie, the hardest thing is getting a studio to give you the money to make the movie. Um, like, as we all know, franchises and sequels and IP and whatever name you want to give it, it's kind of, kind of taken over cinema at the moment. And I grew up obviously in the 80s and early 90s where every movie, it felt like every week was a new sci-fi or fantasy blockbuster. And, and so I was trying to recreate that feeling I was trying to go back to those movies that I loved growing up with and put them all into a pot and stir it and pull out something hopefully that felt a bit, you know, unique and new. Yeah, definitely. And it, it shows. It's really refreshing and it's something to me that uh, stood out amongst many films of the last few years. And just kind of going back a little bit in terms of your film history with Rogue One, with Star Wars Rogue One, which some may say is one of the better of the new Star Wars films out there. What did you, what were some of the lessons that you learned from Rogue One that you brought it to the, the, the creator? There's lots of lessons you can learn from any filmmaking process. I think, I think things that we, we felt were successful was, um, so we shot in the Maldives, we shot in real beaches, you know, obviously it was horrific to have to go to the Maldives uh, for a <laughs> film shoot, but we took one for the team and and so this whole the whole end sequence uh, on Scarif at the end of the movie was was some of that was shot on the real beaches of the, in in you know the Indian Ocean. Uh, we went to Wadi Rum, you know, in Jordan, and we even shot in um, real train stations and then digitally changed them afterwards. And and they were really that that stuff really excited me. And I think is you know what kept the film grounded to some extent. And so I wanted to do a whole movie that way. So with the creator, it was like, I don't want to film in the studios, I don't want to build sets, you know what I mean? Like, we want to go to real locations. So, so we went to eight different countries around the world. We shot in 80 locations, we traveled 10,000 miles, went to the Himalayas, to volcanoes, temple ruins in Cambodia and floating villages, all sorts. And, and then added the science fiction on, on top. So we have this really like rich canvas, you know, as a starting point, which I think makes the film feel like very different to a normal blockbuster. It does, you know, and something that, that I really, if I realize about your films too, is that I'm, by the way, I'm in America living in Singapore. So I'm talking to you from Asia right now about 4.50 a.m. in the morning. Um, but your love affair for the Asian culture, the countries, where did that come from? My assumption is that everyone has that feeling. So um, I think, I thought it was like, I feel like it's the default setting of most people, but if it isn't, if it came from somewhere, I was very lucky when I was about 12. Um, my parents wanted to go on a really nice holiday. We're like, they saved up and we're like, we want to go somewhere really special. And we went, we ended up going to Hong Kong and uh, Thailand. And we sort of went to Chiang Mai, the jungles and Bangkok and the beaches and stuff. And, you know, I was at that perfect age. I was reading science fiction and something about that, that holiday, that, that experience got really embedded in my mind and I was my dad had a video camera he bought a video camera and I just took it the entire holiday I filmed the whole trip and so I was filming it all through this lens and and I always like I think it just got burnt into my retina those visuals it was so fascinating it was like the closest thing I could have had as a kid to going to another planet like I didn't understand anything I was seeing and and then you know uh, as an adult I've just always, I can't help it. I always go back and I, there's something beautiful about taking Asian art and, and kind of blending it with Western art and vice versa. Like when you go around places like Japan, you see English and American and Western influences on, on their pop culture. 
but not fully, just a little bit, and they've done their own twist on it. And it, and I kind of really enjoy it, because I know that must be like what it looks like to them when they come here. And so there's this like bouncing back and forth of ideas that with a little different spin each time that I, th I think is really healthy. No, it, it is, and it's really, um, it's eye-opening to see it, especially because being out here for 16 years myself and living here, and to see it through your eyes, it's refreshing from, because some filmmakers just don't get it. You know what I mean? The nuances of the culture. And speaking of which, because there is a love for not only just the visuals, but the people themselves and how they integrate, of course, in this film, it developed, it kind of divides between the West and New Asia. What was, what were some of the challenges that you faced sort of trying to, to, cry, to try to create that? I think just, I mean, we shot during the pandemic or just the tail end of the pandemic. So my biggest fear when we went to film this is because I think one of the most important things in the movie were people's faces, you know, and seeing kids running around in the streets and like just the realism of being in these amazing locations. And I didn't want uh, this Hollywood movie to come and like block all that off. And then add to that the pandemic with everyone wearing a mask. I was really paranoid that it wasn't, we weren't gonna get that on screen. And we came just at the right time when everyone was allowed to take their masks off but yet there was no tourists there properly. And so we sort of had the freedom, like it was kind of worked totally in our favor where we we went around and there was no other, you know, for a long time, didn't, didn't see any other Westerners. And we were just shooting all these villages that were really happy to see us because we were like the first tourists back in. And so everyone was very welcoming and um, it was a beautiful thing and everyone wanted to be in the movie. Um, it was it was surreal. So we got very lucky in a way. We used like the negative as the positive to some extent. Fantastic. And for the performances of the actors, especially uh, John David Washington and Madeleine Yunaboa Boyles, I mean, they're so good in this. Was being around Asia, did it sort of change their performances from their auditions or from when you first met them in America and then you brought them here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're amazing actors. They, it would have been stunning no matter what. But I know John David, really wanted to he's not a method actor in the sense that you know you can talk to him he's so down to earth and and such a sweet guy in between takes but i think he was quite determined to have the kind of experience that joshua in the movie has he's the character he was playing and have this sort of transformative uh journey and he's every time we weren't filming he was off wandering around like just having his own little moment you know and and what's funny is madeline became his best friend so she would run after him and like interrupt these like you know beautiful things he was experiencing and like talk to him about some toy she would just got or something and it was it was really <laughs> like kind of hilarious to watch in a weird way when you develop a film like this where you have so much you have so much going on to it you have heart you have story yet there's side by there's spectacle how do you as a director find the balance to keep that story going and motivating him in such a more a very emotional way? Uh, the way I probably work is I grabbed everything. So I shot loads and loads and loads. I and mean, the first cut of our movie was five hours, nearly five hours. Then it becomes a game of like removing things. And obviously the most important thing is, is that you care about the characters. You, you feel like w emotionally what they're going through. And so, um, and that becomes less about what I think and a lot more about what the audience thinks. And so you show people and they tell you what's working, what isn't working, and you, you tinker a bit more, you show other people again. And, and that's kind of what post-production is. For about six months, you keep showing people and you keep tweaking it. And until you feel like, I think we're there, I think we've got it just the right level of everything. And so you never get it right the first time, but, it, but based on feedback, you kind of, you get there in the end, hopefully. All right, well, Garrett, that's it for me for today. Thank you so much, and thank you for making this film, and I hope you're nominated. I really do. This is really one of the better films I've seen of 2023, and thank you for it. Really thank appreciate you, it. Thank you so much. Thanks. Very kind. Thank you.